I want you all to show some love for my fraternity brother, for the dynamic, Miles Johnson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I came to, I came to speak to y'all, man. I was really excited for this speech. I've been waiting all day. Uh, I was with my fraternity brothers earlier, as a matter of fact. But again, my name is Miles Johnson, born and raised in Lansing, Michigan, like he said. And I wanted to tell y'all a little bit about resilience um, and, and what it means and what it looks like. Uh, so just, just for a real quick view of the room, who is in high school in here? Oh, everybody. All right, college. Where are my college folks at? All right, graduates. Doctorate degrees, let me see those. All right, shout out to y'all. Uh, <laughs> pending is all right too. All right, so back when I, when I first started my journey as an entrepreneur, and, to, and to tell y'all a little bit about resilience, I was 13 years old, like Kenny said, um, and my father had a conversation with me. And he was like, Miles, um, you know, you're you, you becoming your own young man. I think it's time for you to start making your own money. And I'm like, well, you know, what you mean? Like, I'm 13, okay. He like, you don't want to work for somebody your whole life, do you? I'm like, nah, like, you know, I want to be my own boss. And he was like, well, what you, what you willing to do to, uh, how much do you think you're worth, actually? And I said a million dollars, right? And he said, what you willing to do to get it? And I was like, shoot, whatever, you know, put me on, pops. And so I started selling cookies. And so my dad was a shoe shiner at the Atlanta airport. And if you know anything about the Atlanta airport, it's one of the biggest airports, if not the biggest in the whole nation. And so I used to wake up with my father at six o'clock in the morning, bake the cookies, fresh, put them in my backpack, go to the Atlanta airport, get on the bus, well, bus, train. We stayed there till about three o'clock. And anything, all the money that I made, I would save it. If I didn't sell any cookies, we would just eat the cookies on the train ride back home. And so um, my father was cool like that, and we had a good time. And so what I didn't realize back then is that the seeds that my father planted in me at 13 years old, I'm thinking like, you know, I didn't even think that that was like, ooh, big or like that, right? And, and until I got to college. And I, I want to start this off first. I know we're here to talk about resiliency, but I want to let y'all know college is not a waste of money. Okay, I really found myself in college. But either way, so fast forward, high school, selling cookies in high school, and then boom, I decided to come to BG. Now the reason I decided to come to BG is because I had scholarships, and low key because of TRIO. TRIO had like a, you could come to school early type of thing. So I was like, shoot, sit on campus for a week by myself, dorm, nobody to bother me. I'm like, this is perfect. So uh, TRIO, we had that, we had counseling, so I got my classes scheduled, I'm on campus, I'm living good. Now, I thought I was the man, right? So I'm walking around campus with my briefcase and I got my whole everything in there. I used to sell tight clips back in high school. And so um, while I was in TRIO, there was a uh, counselor, you could call her. Her name was Alexis, and Alexis really saved my life, y'all. So at one point, I'm thinking like, I'm Mr. Entrepreneur, Mr. Money Man, because I told you I wanted a million dollars, right? So I'm like, I'm about to drop out. I'm like, man, forget this. I got my business, we good. And so uh, Alexis was like, wait a minute, Miles. Don't drop out. Because um, look, here's the reality, here's the background, I ain't tell y'all. I wasn't a 4.0 student, all right? I, my grades were so bad, you hear me? There ain't no way. So. My grades are so bad, it wasn't super bad, but I had like a 2.5, and I got kicked. Yeah, right, like she said, dang. So I got booted out of the College of Business at, B at Bowling Green State University, because you, you have to have like a, a 3 flat or a 2.8. I had a 2.5. So I had to then go to the College of Arts and Sciences, and then guess what my major was? Guess what Alexis found? By the grace of God. Somebody can guess? Nope. Advertising, advertising the College of Arts and Sciences saved me. I had to, I started loving college. I'm like, man, this is, this is great. Everything that I used 
For my classwork, I use for my business. I started a business while I was in college. It was called Styles by Miles. Um, and I still have it to, 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 that, to this day. It's actually on the inside of this suit. That's my print. Um, and I got some gifts for y'all, too, over here. I forgot to grab them. Um, but either way, when I was, after I had graduated college, right, and I was like, man, I don't know what to do. Like, anybody else, you know, everybody that's graduated college, at one point, you were like, I don't know what to do. And so I didn't know what to do, but I'm like, I feel like I need to go back home. And so I went back home, back to Lansing, and I was like, man, why does my city look the same from when I left? Like, I was in college for five and a half years. I didn't fail classes. I didn't been to all the parties. I didn't got my heart broke and all, the, all types of stuff. And I come back and this is, look the same? I'm just like, this ain't right. And so then I get a call from my mentor and he's like, Miles, you ever thought about running for office? And I'm like, man, no, I ain't running for no office, right? I want to be a millionaire, right? That's getting in the way of my dreams. But then I had to sit there and think about it. I'm like, let me do my research. So Ingham County Commissioners, they, they run a budget of about $317 million. I don't know if y'all know, but that's a lot more than I got in my pocket. And my mission was to re, redevelop or reinvigorate my neighborhood. So instead of me trying to get the million dollars out of my own pocket, I said, let me run for office and use the government money to reinvigorate my community. And so I, had, I was like, all right, you know what? Let me dive a little bit deeper. Let me dig a little bit deeper with, within myself and run for office. At the time, again, I had just graduated college. Uh, I was moving back home, so I didn't have a, a car. I didn't have a campaign manager. I didn't have a job. But I believed in myself so much, and I, and I had the support system behind me um, to actually run for office. And so I'm knocking doors. I have created my own flyers. I developed my own website, made my logo, because this is all from the advertising degree that I got, thanks to Trio. And so by the, it was like April, right? And I dropped it on my birthday, April 29th. I'm like, bam, I'm running. So the guy I'm running against, he's like 62 years old. He hated me, bro. He hated my guts. I never met him until um, this one day. I, I don't know if y'all know about politics. We're not gonna get too deep into it. But we were at a similar meeting. I walked into the meeting like, I'm geeked, right? He and he's sitting down, he's sitting down, and he look up at me, he was like, Miles Johnson. And I said, hey, Manuel, how you doing? And he was like, oh, man, I'm good. I said, oh, that's great. And then we, you know, chit-chatting. And all of a sudden, you know how, like, somebody tried to, like, little bro you? He was like, man, he got, he got to go up to go speak. And he was like, man, you really doing good on your social media? And, like, tapped me on my shoulder. I'm like, man, why is he, like, on my shoulder like that, bro? So uh, either way, I'm like, I got to beat this guy. I got to beat this guy because he think he, could, he finna let, like, little bro me. Next thing I know, I'm knocking doors. The day of the election, I beat him basically by like 75 votes. I won with 839 votes. Thank you. 839 votes. I, that boy was sick. So, big dog, he was sick. So, 839 votes. 839 people voted for me. But look, the whole backstory. I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job. This man is a grown man. He got family, kids, he got a car, he got all the resources. Raised more money than me. I only, had, I only raised $3,000. How did I do it? See, again, the reason that college is not a waste of money is because it teaches you about resilience. I failed classes, but I still went to class. Are you hearing me? Why would I fail a class and go back like, ah, I think I got it this time? I didn't, but then I went to the tutors that TRIO had, and they helped me figure it out. Did I get an A? Absolutely not. I got a C, a mean C. I'm talking about that was a hard C, but I passed. So when I'm, when I'm, when I'm running for office and I'm knocking doors, and they're like, why you want to run for office? Don't you feel like you're too young? I said, no. I said, my community has looked the same since I was a kid. So to me, at this point, 
Like, if nobody else is gonna step up, I don't care how old I am, my community needs somebody to step up. And I feel like the age don't matter at that point. So, uh, if you don't know too much about politics, you have your primary race and then you have your general election race. So I won the primary, which is the first guy, and my uh, general election race was a, a Republican. I beat him 75%. January 1st, 2023, I become Ingham County Commissioner. Now, this is when the real work begins, okay? Because I thought it was an, enough just beating him. I'm like, man, I did it. Ah, right? Feeling like Hercules, right? You ever have a big win, you like, ah, I did that. Yeah, right? But then the like, energy goes up, and then you go like, ooh, I could kind of chill for a second. No. So uh, my first year as Ingham County Commissioner, I was able to do a couple things. Uh, so I, there's this black-owned company in Lansing, and he was asking me, like, Miles, man, is there any way that I could get some dollars from Ingham County? I'm like, yeah, so this is a resilience, right? They telling me there's nothing we could do to give them any dollars, right? There's nothing we can do, nothing we can do. I'm like, all right. So then I talked to this guy at this local economic area partnership, it's called LEAP, okay, that'll get the full acronym. They had $26,000 and funding that we gave them. Through a Zoom call, I said, can you give that $26,000 to this black owned company so that they can give tech, so that they can do technical assistance for Ingham County businesses countywide? They said, yeah, absolutely, Miles. Yeah, of course we can do that. Had I not ran for office, you think they would be like, yeah, Miles, absolutely, no. But see, through resilience, through having enough heart to keep going. I had days I was crying. I had days I had spent like $250 on Jimmy John's. Nobody came to my fundraiser. It was just me and my man sitting, in, sitting eating Jimmy John's and, and drinking Dasani water. Like, yeah, bro, my, my bad. I thought, I thought I had it like that. Right? I had, I had another fundraiser. My man drove all the way from Detroit. He was the only person that showed up. Nobody came. Not gonna lie, I really cried in that moment. And I called my mentor like, bro, I don't know if I could do this, bro. Like, I don't, like, I, I thought, you know, I thought I was doing this for the community. I thought I would get more support, right? Like, young black man, like, come on, man. Like, show me some love. He like, Miles, now. I, I hear you, but you've never been that type of person to quit. So you either gonna pick yourself up or you can drop out the race and just keep on going about your way. Either way you go, I'm cool with it, but the miles I know, you ain't gonna give up. So I was like, dang. I wiped my little tears away. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make one call. I made a call. Here's a connection. He used to work in Trio. His name is Dr. Grant. He, he told me one day, he said, Miles, if you ever want me to invest in one of your businesses, give me a call. I said, this ain't a business, but this is a mission, though. I called him. I said, Dr. Grant, I'm running for office for my community. Um, is there any way that you could donate to my campaign? He said, how much you need? I said, 500. He was like, you got it. Can you come get it tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get it, bro. I had zero dollars, zero people pull up to my fundraiser. I made one call and raised $500. Nobody's handing that out. Nobody. I was crying five minutes ago. I made a call of 500. I was like, woo. I used that to get my flyers, and I ended up winning a race by 75 votes because he planted that seed in me of $500. So when I'm like, I'm telling you my story because there's a lot of you out here in this crowd and I teach, I, I'm a math teacher now on top of being my, a county commissioner. And the same look y'all giving me is the same look my students have. They be looking at me with these dead eyes and I'll be trying to tell them like, bro, you don't understand. I cannot do this alone. I need to see who's gonna step up in order to take my place, whether it's in Lansing, Toledo, Bowling Green, North Dakota, South Dakota. If you ain't got the heart to keep going, I promise to God it's gonna be hard for you. And it's not even like people don't, 
like not trying to show you no love or they don't like you. It's a people thing. And I had to realize that. I really had to soak that in like, dang. But if you keep going, after I won, all of a sudden, like, hey, Commissioner Miles, city councilman. I'm not the city council person, by the way, OK? But as long as people know that I'm an elected official, I don't really care what you call me. Call me the president, call me the mayor, I don't care. As long as you call me something, that means I'm doing my job. So if there's anything that you want to do in this life, I promise you it's going to come with hurdles, pain. You might cry a little bit. But if you ain't willing to cry through it and keep going, it must not be for you. But if it is for you, then you have a community around. You can reach out to your trio people. You can reach out to your professors for extra assistance. There are people there to help you. I thought I was alone, but I wasn't alone. And so my message here today is through your resilience, you have to realize that you are not alone, that there is somebody out there to help you with a reach of hand, whether you see it or not. Because there was multiple tools of people that had their hand out, but I just didn't know how to reach. And so that's where I want to get you to. You have to learn how to reach out for help. I don't care, oh, excuse me. I do care, but I don't care if it, with your background. Oh, my mama did this to me. My dad did this to me. But you're in, now in a new position. You're in college. You have to take advantage of the opportunity before you repeat what your mom did to somebody else, before it repeats within yourself, whatever your dad did to you. Do not repeat. Break the cycle. Break the generational curse. It's, it's all on y'all. All these beautiful faces, man. Now, before I end, I do want to ask, do I have time for questions, y'all? Fantastic. All right, does anybody have uh, any questions for me in the audience? Yes. How's the turkey business going now? Say it one more time. Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't sell cookies anymore, but get a couple cookies? Oh, they fire, I ain't gonna lie, but uh, no, nah, so what I'm doing is for my, uh, for, for my campaign, I'm gonna I'm use them to fundraise. Yeah, I might ship them out too, so let me know. We can connect after, ship them out. Uh, any other questions though? Yes, sir. Oh, man, my favorite cookie was the uh, chocolate chip butterscotch. Headbanger, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I had chocolate chip, chocolate chip butterscotch. I had chocolate chip, white chocolate chip, oatmeal cranberry raisin, um, peanut butter. You said what? My bad, brother, I ain't got nothing today. I did bring some other stuff. Kenny, uh, can you hand me that bag right there, please? It say friends. Why I'm handing Miles this bag, this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, we had this flyer on me. We had this flyer on me. We had this flyer on me. All right. So, I got a couple prizes up here. Um, this is my Styles, my Miles Beanie hat. You got a question? Yeah. What's up? Are you taking like personal questions, like one-on-one questions? I'll take any question. It's all good. I work up to you after. Oh, after? All right, bet. Um, so, yes. So, I got beanie hats here. I got some lip gloss for the ladies. I got a little cologne. Okay. And I got a different style beanie right here. But y'all got to answer my questions right. So... You got a question, sir? Lansing, Michigan, yeah. Yeah, I heard of Saginaw. I've been to Saginaw. Yeah, yeah. You born and raised in Saginaw? All right, my Michigan folks. I'd love to see it. Anybody else from Michigan in here? All right, all right. There we go, there we go. Um, so, it's real simple. Get the, get the question right. I'll let you pick from the uh, prizes on the, on the table. So, what, uh, let, me, let me see. What was my major in college? Dang. No, all right, I got to do a new one. I got to do a new one. 
All right, what, what, at what age did I start selling cookies? Oh, shoot, that's too easy. Uh, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's my, what's my title right now? You're a commissioner. It's Ingham. Ingham. Ingham County. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, which one would you like? I'll get the close now. Oh, it's five. Oh, yeah, only one, brother. No, I got, I got three colognes. I got three colognes. All right. Um, let's see. Mm. This, is a, this is a good one. How many cookie flavors did I name? Red, red, red hoodie. No. Nope. Name them off. I'll give you some extra credit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you named off uh, oatmeal, raisins, like it was like cranberry raisins, something like that. Oh wow, that's a good good memory. Yep. All right, which one would you like? Which one? This one. All right. All right. Oh, uh, let me see. I think this might be too easy. How old am I? Yep. Dang, you good, yep. Which one would you want? 37 is crazy, huh? Which one? I got this one. I got this one. I guess you can't really see, huh? Oh, you might have to come up, bro. Yeah. There you go. All right, let me think of something else. Something good. Ah, I might have to do a math problem. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's, uh, hey, no calculators, bro. No calculators. What's seven to the third power? No, too slow. Too slow. Seven to the third. Who? No. Yes, 343. Uh, which one would you like? We got lip gloss, we got a couple beanie hats. You want that lip gloss? Uh-oh, she said lip gloss. She want that. Here, I'm gonna give you this one. All right, I'm gonna do two more, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off stage. All right, um, yeah, no problem. Uh, what was the first question my dad asked me when I was, uh, when I was 13? Dang, yep, y'all paying attention. All right, black and white beanie, please, it gone. All right. Here you go. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna tell you at the end. Here you go. All right. Uh, last one. Um, what's my photographer name? Oh, No, <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, nah. I ain't tell y'all his name. Hey, okay. What? Was, what was what, what year did I first uh, come here when, when Kenny said it earlier? Oh, y'all good. Y'all paying attention. Uh, which, which one would you like? The other black one. Y'all got a lot of hair. Y'all picking beanie hats. There you go. Good catch. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll give a couple ladies. Uh, some lip gloss. I can't do that, brother. It's, I gotta show some love to the ladies. There you go. You want? I got you. There you go. Uh, the cologne is for sale, brother. One for ten, two for fifteen. Oh man, I feel like I'm uh, giving out turkeys on Christmas.
I got you. Here you go. All right. Oh, yeah. And, the, and last Benny for sale, too. One for 20. Oh, we got two more. My bad. Anyway, uh, thank you all so much for the time, uh, paying attention and listening. Thank you so much.